here is dr anil timmanaika obg faculty alan next i think neat pg 2023 exam got over be relaxed don't worry about the answers and all and so doctor so i think you people have given the best okay now today i'm going to discuss obstetric part of recall session of neat pg 2023 i got around 7 to 8 questions from the obstetric part so most of the questions are clinical based questions i'm very happy to see those questions they are all not single liners more of clinical oriented and so more of clinical application the questions and so and uh, most of the questions are uh, clinical oriented and direct application and so if you properly worked in the anc ward or labor ward gynec ward or gynec opd or anc opd definitely you will crack all these obstetrics questions even gynec questions also yes yes so i'm going to discuss the obstetric questions and my gynec questions will be discussed by my colleague yes now first question pathograph wherever i think no i used to tell my students this year this me this year definitely you can expect one or uh, two question from the pathograph luckily you got the question and so doctor very nice pathograph so i was telling uh, to my all students whenever you are reading the pathograph you should come from top to bottom like you should start with the fetal heart rate amniotic fluid status molding cervical dilatation descent then you try in contraction maternal condition yes in the same way you should follow here if you follow definitely you won't miss this question such a wonderful question this time it was asked what is it question so look into the pathograph first i will look into the fetal heart rate very nice question here if you see this fetal heart rate it starts from the 140 please look into that it starts from 140 150 then it comes to what doctor 120 and 100 it reached around how much doctor it is 80 beats per minute please look into it fetal brady is there maybe something yes fetal distress we will look into the further parameters of the photograph so from 140 130 140 130 120 80 yes there's a sudden drop in the fetal heart rate now comes to the amniotic fluid status initially clear like a doctor initially color of the liquor is what doctor clear then it has become blood stained please make a note of it then it has become blood stained then it has become meconium stained what more you want once again, yes, classical of fetal distress, Cats classical of fetal distress. Now come to the degree of molding. Doctor, it is 3 plus molding. It's a pathological molding. Understood, doctor? There's a fall in the fetal heart rate. Yes, meconium stein like. Yes, grade 3 molding. Yes, from this itself, we can say there is something making the fetus to go for what abnormality. So we'll see what is this. So fetal condition definitely deranged. Understood, doctor? Fetal bradycardia, meconium stein like a grade 3 molding molding grade 3 molding now come to the cervical dilatation at admission it is of about how much centimeter doctor 4 centimeter at admission it is of about how much centimeter 4 centimeter after 4 hours it is of about 6 centimeter and so some students are saying it is 7 centimeter don't worry whatever whether it is a 6 or 7 you should understand the graph so at admission it is a 4 centimeter after 4 hours it is 6 centimeter next after 4 hours it is once again 6 6 6 I'm telling you here, the cervical dilatation is arrested at 6, 6. Another important point, here the pathograph curve crosses the action line. Look into the point. You got the point? Here the pathograph curve crosses the action line. So now miss, some action is needed. I was telling you normally, the pathograph curve will be on the left of the alert line or on the alert line. If it comes between the alert and action line, definitely it is slow progression, augmentation is needed. If it crosses the action line, definitely action is needed. Not always cesarean. It can be forceps also. Understood, doctor? It is 666. Six, six. Now, come to the descent of it. Doctor, as per the recommendation, we should not plot the descent of it. That is, you should know. Let us see. They have given descent of it also. At admission, it is 3 fifth palpable. After 4 hours also, it is 3 fifth. After 4 hours also, 3 fifth. You got the point, doctor. So, initially cervical dilatation is 4 centimeter. After 4 hours, it is 6. After 4 hours, it is 6. Understood, no? So, so for admission to 4 hours is what? 6 centimeter. Next to 4 hours is 6. 6, 6. For 4 hours, the cervical dilatation arrested for 4 hours at 6 centimeter. Now, the descent of it also arrested for 3 fifth palpable. 3 fifth palpable. Now, come to uterine contraction. Dear doctors, so initially it is 20 to 40 seconds. We can see the oblique lines. After that, there is a dark shading. Dear doctors, there is a dark shading that is more than 40 seconds. It is more than 40 seconds. Now, if you see that, very important take-home message. Here, the uterine contractions are strong. Yes, 
it is adequate uterine contraction but cervix is not dilating it is not giving you got the point doctor cervix is not dilating it is not descending something is there what could be there yes definitely there can be a cpd which can leading to obstructed labor Understood, doctor? So, now, what is the management of this woman? You got the point, doctor? Here, there is a strong uterine contraction that is more than 40 seconds. Yes, three contractions for 10 minutes, each lasting for more than 40 seconds. In spite of strong uterine contractions also, cervix is arrested at 6 cm, head is arrested at 3 fifth palpable. Yes, means cervix is not giving, head is not descending. Something is there. That is something. It may be a CPD leading to obstructed labor. So, what is the management of this woman? Low forceps delivery, definitely not possible. I was telling you the take-home message in forceps is, before applying the forceps, yes, cervix should be fully dilated. Please make a note of it. So, for the forceps, yes, cervix should be fully dilated. Definitely not. And vacuum, minimum cervical dilatation of about how much? 7 to 8 centimeter. Minimum cervical dilatation of how much? 7 to 8 centimeter is needed for vacuum delivery. Yes, yes. And doctor, one of the important relative contraindication for vacuum is molding. Molding. Doctor, we can apply forceps in molding but we can't apply that is molding is a contraindication that is a relative contraindication for vacuum so definitely the second option is also ruled out and definitely third immediate cesarean section yes doctor what is the diagnosis of this photograph doctor it is a arrest disorder secondary to cpd leading to obstructed labor wonderful diagnosis it's a arrest disorder please make a note of it it's a arrest disorder secondary to cpd Leading to what, doctor? Obstructed labor. Leading to obstructed labor. You got the point? Yes, yes. Answer for this question is yes, we have to go for immediate cesarean section. We have to go for immediate cesarean section. Never augment the process of uh, labor with oxytocin. What is the expected complication? If you augment the labor with oxytocin in a case of obstructed labor, yes, uterus will give away. Rupture uterus. Rupture uterus. I think this question is clear, doctor. The first marking should always be on the alert line. The normal partograph could be either on the left of the alert line or on the alert line. These are all the golden points I am telling you. First marking should be always on the alert line. The normal partograph curve should be either on the left of the alert line or on the alert line. Yes, that is the one thing. And another important point, doctor, what I will tell you, we should start plotting the partograph at a cervical dilatation of 4 cm. Yes, yes. Now, come back to the next question. Is this clear, doctor? Is it clear? Yes. Thank you. Now, we will proceed to the next question. Yes, wonderful question. You can look into this all the time. This is repeat question. Same question asked in NEET PG 2021. I discussed same question two years back. I am discussing the same question this year also. Look into this. A 26 year old pregnant mother visits to ANC OPD with history of previously delivered twins 4 years back. What is the obstetric score? I was telling you many times, doctor. So, that is we have got gravida, yes, and parity. Gravida and parity. What is gravida? Gravida is nothing but total pregnancies. Please make a note of it. Gravida is nothing but total pregnancies irrespective of Dear doctor, irrespective of POG and irrespective of outcome, please make a note of it. Total pregnancies, irrespective of POG or irrespective of outcome, whatever may be the POG, whatever may be the outcome, not always live birth, abortion, stillbirth, just how many times she is pregnant. That is total pregnancy. Means gravida includes both present and previous pregnancies. Please make a note of it. Gravida includes both present and previous. Now, parity means only previous viable pregnancies only previous viable pregnancies that is which have gone beyond 28 weeks please make a note of it it includes only previous pregnancies yes that have gone beyond 28 weeks irrespective of outcome please make a note of it irrespective of outcome yes yes now parity means it's a previous pregnancies not the previous live births. You got the point, doctor? Parity is previous pregnancies, not previous live births. That's why parity remains the same. Please make a note of it. Parity remains the same in twins or triplets. Parity remains the same in twins or triplets. Miss parity is same. That is single. Now tell me, she is pregnant mother visits to ANC OPD with the history of previously delivered twins. Means she is pregnant for second time. Gravida and previous pregnancy is twins. Yes, she has given two live births. That is two children. 
but previously it is only one time means dr parites previous pregnancies not previous childbirths understood doctor that's why it is gravida to para one Yes, answer for this question is what, doctor? Gravida to para 1. You got the point, doctor? So, parity is previous pregnancies which have gone beyond 28 weeks. You got the point, doctor? And parity is not the previous childbirths. How many childbirths is not a parity? It is a previous viable pregnancies. That's why the answer for this question is G to P1. Gravida to para 1. It's a repeat question, doctor. It's a repeat question. Most of the times in the practicals also we'll ask this question. Yes? Yes, whenever I will be the examiner, definitely I'll ask this question for most of the students. And so, a mother, second time pregnant with his two of twins. What is the obstetric score? Common question from most of the practical examiners. Yes? Yes. Now, come back to the next question. Very important. Yes, look into this question. Now, I was telling you, when I will be teaching, you can expect minimum two to three questions from one of the topic that is causes of bleeding in the first trimester. That is abortion, ectopic and molar. Yes. So, this time they asked the question on ectopic. Look into this. A 28-year-old woman visits to labor casualty with a history of right-sided lower abdomen pain and mild bleeding per vagina after eight weeks of gestation. Her general condition is satisfactory, means hemodynamically stable. On ultrasound, reveals an adnexal mass of size 2.5 into 3.5 centimeter on the right side. Without evidence of cardiac activity, but no intrauterine pregnancy. Her beta SCG is 2500 international unit. What is the modality of treatment? She, doctor, very important golden point. She is hemodynamically stable. Yes. Adnexal mass of size that is less than 3.5 centimeter and beta SCG is less than 5000. She fits under criteria. And you all know, doctor, you all know that what is the absolute indications? Please make a note of it. What is the absolute indications for medical management? What is the absolute indications for medical management? That is stable mother, that is hemodynamically stable mother and unruptured ectopic. Unruptured ectopic. Please make a note of it. So, absolute indication for medical management is stable mother and unruptured ectopic. And what is the relative indication? Please make a note of it. Relative indication, yes, that is beta HCG less than 5000 international unit per liter. Yes, ectopic sac size, please make a note of it. Ectopic sac size less than 3.5 centimeter. And no cardiac activity, no cardiac activity. Definitely, doctor, in this question, this patient fits under what, doctor? Medical management. Yes, she is hemodynamically stable. Beta SCG less than uh, 5000. Ectopic sac size less than 3.5 centimeter and no cardiac activity. Yes, so now, now come to this. The question is little bit tough. Now, what a little bit elaborate, we can give single dose or multi-dose. Now, doctor, I was telling you, definitely we will discuss in the class also. Now, what if you know that we have got two regimens for the medical management of ectopic. One is single dose regimen, yes, and another one is multi-dose regimen. Now, doctor, in the single dose, now on day one, doctor, we will check beta SCG. You got the point, doctor, please make a note of it. On day one, we will check beta HCG. Yes, beta SCG, definitely we'll check be, uh, beta SCG on day one. Yes, and the day one itself will also give injection methotrexate that is 50 milligram per meter square. You got the point, doctor, understood? So, on day one, we will check, please make a note of it, we'll check beta SCG. On the same day, we'll give 50 milligram per meter square body surface area that is methotrex. Then day 4, we will check only beta SCG, we won't give methotrexate. And once again on day 7, yes, we will check beta SCG. Now, if the fall in beta SCG from day 4 to day 7, if it is more than or equal to 15 percent, definitely it is satisfactory fall. Please make a note of it. You got the point, doctor? If the fall in beta SCG from day 4 to day 7, what is it called as satisfactory fall? If there is more than or equal to 15 percent fall in beta SCG from day 4 to day 7, yes, it is a satisfactory fall, we will follow off with beta SCG. If it is less than 15 percent fall in beta SCG from day 4 to day 7, we will repeat the dose on day 7. We will repeat the dose on what doctor? Day 7. Now doctor, between single dose and multi dose, the commonly regimen used is single dose regimen. Commonly used regimen is what doctor? Single dose regimen. You got the point doctor, you understood? Single dose injection method takes it 50 milligram per meter square intramuscular. You got the point? So, she is a candidate, definitely beta SCG is less than 5000, ectopic sac size is less than 3.5 centimeter, no cardiac activity, hemodynamically stable. What more you want, doctor? Definitely she is a candidate for what? Single dose methotrexate, that is medical management. Day one, we will check beta SCG, we will give 
methotrexate. Day four, we'll check beta SAG, no methotrexate. Day seven, we'll check beta SAG. If it is fall in beta SAG from day four to day seven, if it is more than or equal to 15%, it is a satisfactory fall. It is a satisfactory fall. If it is less than 15% fall, the T's will repeat the dose on day seven. Yes, this is single dose. And come to multi-dose, two points on multi-dose. Doctor, on day one, yes, day three, Day 5, day 7, we will check beta at CG levels. Yes, we will give injection methotrexate on all these days. And on day 2, day 4, day 6, day 8, we will give what doctor? Leucoverin, that is folinic acid. Please make a note of it. Folinic acid, not folic acid. Doctors, it is folinic acid. Yes, yes. This is 1 milligram per kg methotrexate. This is 0.1 milligram per kg orally. You got the point. This is multi-dose regimen. The commonly used is single dose regimen. Yes, yes. Now come back to the next question. Very important question. You can look into this. A 26-year-old primary gravida visits to routine ANC checkup at 8 weeks of pregnancy. She is 2 months. She is sure of her dates. Yes, USG reveals live viable pregnancy of 7 weeks, 6 days. On blood investigation, our hemoglobin is 9 gram per cent. When you want to start iron medication in her. Doctor, you all know, till first trimester, Please make a note of it. Still first trimester, that is till, please make a note of it, till 13 weeks. Till first trimester, that is nothing but till 13 weeks, 6 days, iron is avoided. Iron is avoided. Means in first trimester, dear doctor, we won't give iron medication. Yes, till 13 weeks, 6 days. That is till first trimester, we won't give iron. Iron to be started after 14 weeks. That is after first trimester, iron should be started. Please make a note of it. Iron should be started after what doctor? Yes, 14 weeks. Yes, what is the answer doctor? Yes, it is 14 weeks. She is 9 gram. Yes, she is a moderate anemia. She is a moderate anemia. It's a direct question. So, iron should not be given in the first trimester. Yes, it's a relative contraindication. It's a relative contraindication. You got the point? So, and iron should be always started after 14 weeks. After 14 weeks. That is after first trimester. Understood, doctor? You all know. So, now previously we used to use till 12 weeks is first trimester. Now, we, we don't have the concept of 12 weeks. Till 14 weeks is the first trimester. 14 to 28 weeks is the second trimester. And from 28 week onwards, it is third trimester. And once again, doctor, our Bible, the Williams Obstetrics 26th edition has given fourth trimester also. What is that fourth trimester? that is till 6 weeks of the delivery is called as 4th trimester. Till 6 weeks of the delivery is 4th trimester. I think this question is clear. Yes. Now doctor, next question. Very important question. Look into this question. Very nice question. 26 year old primary gravida admitted to I dependency unit ANC ward at a period of 36 weeks 6 days. On obstetric grip examination, uterus corresponds to 34 to 36 weeks relaxed with, with no contraction. Uterus is relaxed with adequate liker. You got the point, doctor. Uterus is relaxed, clinically adequate liker and estimated fetal weight is 2.8 kg. On pervaginal examination reveals adequate pelvis with intact membranes. Adequate pelvis with intact membranes. She is not associated with iris comorbidities. Understood, no? And obstetric scan does not reveal any abnormality. What is the next step in the management? Doctor, very, very important. She is 36 weeks, 6 days. You got the point, doctor? She is 36 weeks, 6 days. Uterus is relaxed. Uterus is relaxed. Singleton. Singleton, uterus is relaxed, singleton, yes, that is the one thing and pelvis is adequate, membranes are intact. Definitely doctor, yes, we have to go for external cephalic version in this patient. Doctor, look into this. Doctor, golden absolute indications, absolute indications I am telling you, absolute indications for external cephalic version is, that is 36 weeks, 6 days in a primary gravida or multi gravida, that is the main indication. Another main indication, singleton pregnancy, very, very important. Singleton pregnancy, yes, that is the one thing and membranes intact, yes, fetal artery reassuring, that is no fetal distress and transverse slide, transverse slide. We can look into that doctor, USG shows with adequate like So, another one thing in this, doctor, USG shows transverse slide. It is missed out. Please make a note of it. USG shows transverse slide. You got the point. Adequate liker. Clinically estimated fetal weight of 2.8 kg. And pervagenal examination reveals adequate pelvis with intact membranes. She is not associated with iris factors. Obstetric scan does not reveal any abnormality with transverse slide. 36 weeks, 6 days. 
transverse like uterus relax pelvis adequate yes membranes intact so she is definitely a candidate for what doctor external cephalic version absolute requirement first she should be 36 weeks 6 days yes definitely that is the one thing singleton pregnancy please make a note of this so excess cephalic version is contraindicated in multi fetal that is the one thing adequate pelvis yes fetal heart sound should be reassuring means no fetal distress yes membrane should be intact Understood, doctor. Membranes should be intact. If membranes are ruptured, definitely it is a contraindication for what? External cephalic version. And no contraindications for vaginal delivery. Now, doctor, you have done ECV. If the mother has got major CPD, definitely ECV won't help. That's why no contraindication for vaginal delivery means the pelvis should be adequate. Understood, no placenta previa, no abruption. Yes, so no fetal distress. These are all the contraindications for vaginal delivery. You got the point? So, absolute requirement singleton pregnancy. Yes, fetal heart shape should be normal. That is the one thing. Intact membranes. Please make a note of it. Intact membranes. That is the one thing. And pelvis should be adequate. You got the point, doctor? And 36 weeks, 6 days. Yes, we can We can up to 40 weeks is, uh, uh, we can do easy. So, more than or equal to 36 weeks, 6 days is an absolute indication for what doctor? External cephalic version. The answer for this question is yes, perform external cephalic version. And doctor, two indications for ECV. One is doctor that is transverse lie and what doctor? Frank breach at a term. Please make a note of it. Two indications for ECV. One is transverse lie. Please make a note of it transverse lie at a term please make a note of it if there is transverse lie in labor that is in active phase of the labor no acv but we can do ECV in latent phase. It is a relative indication. But doctor, transverse line in active phase of the labor, definitely we should take her for cesarean section. But transverse line in latent phase, yes, it's a relative indication for ECV. Understood, doctor? Then another one golden indication for ECV that is frank breach. Please make a note of it. Frank breach at the top. You got the point? These are the two absolute indications for ECV. Transverse line at the top, frank breach at the top. And absolute requirements, I told you. Opposite to absolute requirement, definitely it's a contraindication. Ruptured membrane, fetal distress, multi-fetal gestation. Yes, uh, uh, there is contraindication to vaginal delivery. I think you got the point, doctor. Answer for this question is what, doctor? Perform ECV. Now, we'll go to the next question. Wonderful question. Look into this. 26-year-old primary gravida visits to routine ANC OPD at 36 weeks gestation with history of difficulty in breathing and walking. On obstetric abdomen examination, abdomen not tensed. Means it is relaxed uterus with symphysio light of about how much? 42 centimeters. Fetal heart sounds are not easily audible and fetal heart sounds are not easily palpable. What is the diagnosis of this condition? Now, can you tell me what is the diagnosis of this condition, doctor? Yes. Now, doctor, definitely look into this. Definitely it is not intrauterine fetal demise because in intrauterine fetal demise, definitely the fundal height will be what doctor less than POG. Now, doctor, if, if you go that the fund here, fundal height is more than POG. Please make a note of it. So, she is 32 weeks. As per 32 weeks, the symphysio fundal height will be how much centimeter? Yes, 32 centimeter. So, beyond 32 weeks, we won't measure symphysio fundal height. You know that. Understood, doctor? Till 32 weeks only, we'll measure symphysio fundal height. Beyond 32 weeks, we won't measure symphysio fundal height. Now, she is 32 weeks. As per 32 weeks, our symphysio fundal height is 42 centimeter. It is over distended for the gestation age. Now, doctor, if you go for DDs, Please make a note of it. If you go for DDs, where the fundal height more than POG, one is wrong dates. Please make a note of it. One is wrong dates. Yes, if she is not sure of her dates, definitely there will be a discrepancy between the what clinical POG and menstrual POG. That is the one thing. Second one, second one, doctor, if there is multi fetal gestation, yes, multi fetal gestation, that is twins. Third, polyhydromnias, definitely, yes polyhydromnias yes fourth fourth macrosomia macrosomia yes that is the one thing so wrong dates multi fetal gestation polyhydromnias macrosomia fifth fifth even doctor even full bladder full bladder also sometimes will give more height more fundal height that's why you should always examine any obstetric case with emptying the bladder yes yes then macrosomia any tumors in the lower uterine segment tumors in the lower uterine segment like fibroid understood so these are all the dds these are all the dds where the fundal height will be more than pog now opposite to that fundal height 
Dr. Fundal Eid, less than POG. Once again, wrong dates. Please make a note of it. Once again, wrong dates. Yes, that is the one thing. Intrauterine fetal demise or fetal growth restriction. Then oligohydromnias. Oligohydromnias. Please make a note of it. Then transverse lie. Doctor, please make a note of it. Transverse in transverse lie also, the fundalite will be less than POG. Yes, yes. Now come back to this. Doctor, definitely not IUFT. Yes. And definitely not maternal ascites. Only thing we have left out is polyadramnias and abruption. Doctor, in abruption, uterus is tense, tender and rigid. You all know. Because there is premature separation of normally situated placenta. Due to premature separation of normally situated placenta, there will be what doctor release of two things. One is thromboplastin. Please make a note of it. One is thromboplastin and another one is thrombin. So, this is the release of thromboplastin and thrombin from retroplacental clot. So, this thromboplastin and thrombin, they are all uterotonics. Please make a note of it. They are all uterotonics which increases the tone of the uterus, which increases the tone of the uterus, which makes tone, hypertony. Understood, doctor? Here, uterus is relaxed, not tensed. Definitely, it is not abruption. You got the point, doctor? Understood, doctor? In abruption, due to release of thromboplastin or thrombin, the patient will present with painful vaginal bleeding. Uterus is tense, tender and rigid. Yes, here in the question, it is relaxed uterus. Even the fetal heart sounds also not easily audible and fetal parts also not easily auscultated. Yes, even in abruption also, due to tense, tender uterus, fetal heart sounds are not easily audible. Fetal parts also not easily palpable. Yes, that is uh, uh, for further abruption. But in polyhydromnias, doctor, uterus is relaxed. Even due to over distended abdomen, fetal heart sounds also not easily audible and fetal parts also not easily palpable. So, the answer for this question is polyhydromnias. You got the point, doctor? So, in abruption, uterus is tense, tender, rigid. Yes. But fetal heart sounds not easily audible, fetal parts not easily palpable. Yes. So, sometimes it is uh, for further abruption, only again it is not tensed. Yes. And in polyhydramnias, it is relaxed uterus, fetal heart sounds are not easily audible, fetal parts are not easily palpable. And another one, due to such a over distended uterus, the patient is presenting with difficulty in breathing, difficulty in walking. Yes. Answer for this question is what, doctor? Polyhydromnias. I think this question is clear. Yes. Now, come back to the next question, dear doctors. Wonderful question. 30-year-old primary gravida brought by her son to the emergency labor casualty with a history of agitation, restlessness at 38 weeks POG. So, her son gives history that she is a known case of bronchial asthma on oral steroids and has thyroid disorder on anti-thyroid medication. Which of the following drug is contraindicated for her condition? Very direct question. She is a known case of what? Bronchial asthma. That is the one thing. And she is known case of what doctor? Thyroid disorder on anti-thyroid medication. But I think this feature suggests you of maybe thyrotoxicosis. Now, all of the following are given safely in this condition except you all know whenever you are studying the uterotonics so you study that is 15 methyl please make a note of it pgf2 alpha what is that called as carboprost please make a note of it 15 methyl pgf2 alpha what is that called as carboprost carboprost is also called as dinoprost or imabate dinoprost or imabate or prostadine prostadine now doctor so, this is used in the management of PPH. Please make a note of it. Not in the induction of labor. This is used in the management of what, doctor? PPH. The start dose. Start dose is 250 microgram intramuscularly. And the maximum dose, we will give 8 doses. Please make a note of it. Maximum doses is 8. That is 215 to 8. That is 2000 microgram or 2 mg. Understood, doctor? Start dose is 250 microgram. Yes, maximum dose still 8 doses. That is 250 microgram every 15 minutes for 8 doses we can give. So, that is 2000 microgram or 2 mg. Understood, doctor? And doctor, the contraindication for this carboprost, please make a note of it. Contraindication, yes, known case of bronchial asthma. That is the one contraindication. And if there is pulmonary hypertension and suspected, please make a note of it, suspected amniotic fluid embolism. 
suspected amniotic fluid embolism. Yes, these are all the contraindications. Now, the patient is a known case of bronchial asthma. Definitely PGF2 alpha is not given. The only use of PGF2 alpha in obstetrics is PPH. We can give mesoprostol. PG1 is what doctor? Mesoprostol. We can give PG1. PG2 is called as dinoprostone. Please make a note of it. Not dinoprost. Dinoprost means once again carboprost. Dinoprostone that is cervi prime gel. And oxytocin we can give. I think this question is clear, doctor. Here the patient is known case of bronchial asthma and she is a known case of thyroid disorder on anti-thyroid medication. What drug you want to avoid in this patient, doctor? Yes, definitely carboprost is avoided. We can give mesoprostol, we can give dinoprostone, we can give oxytocin. I think this question is clear, doctor. Yes, yes, doctor. This time, majority, not majority, 100% questions from the obstetrics is of clinical oriented. Yes. You should remember this. This time, 100% questions from obstetric is of clinical oriented. I think definitely you are all happy with this session, doctor. Once again, I am thanking you for this patience listening. Okay, doctor, once again, follow me in Alan. Next, Dr. Anil Timanaika. Thank you, doctors. Thank you.